Hello, and uh, this is the one I promised to do for the cufflinks, although I'm not too sure how good it's going to come out on the video, but we'll have a go and see. So this is my pink shirt, as promised. It's the only cufflink shirt I've got. And um, like a lot of people, can you see on the back there, there's two buttons. So I haven't got a, I haven't got a cufflink shirt that's just a cufflink shirt. Like a proper cufflink person would only buy a cufflink shirt, you know, that hasn't got any buttons on it. I think they're made for like the lower end of the socio-economic ladder like us, as opposed to people that have got lots and lots and lots and lots of money who wouldn't dream of buying a cufflink shirt with buttons in it. So the problem I've always had with cufflinks is because the shirts I've bought come with buttons, it's difficult to hide it all. You know, and um, and cufflinks are traditionally small. They tend to make them out of pennies and five p's and one thing and another. And I've always believed that uh, there's a business there for large cufflinks. But I, any cufflink manufacturer that's ever bought off me, I can't really get them interested in in uh, in going into the cufflink market with the big coins. But I think there's a market with the chunky coins. Anyway, here's my shirt. So this one is a Gruffalo. Can you see that? And I think they look pretty smart myself. That one there. Oh, he's upside down. Just turn him around. All right, see? Gruffalo. Now I think it looks pretty smart. And uh, somebody did make a mention, I have to mention this, somebody did make a mention of not being 100% happy at essentially me destroying what are good quality coins, you know, especially non-release coins like the Gruffalo, it's not been released into circulation. So um, that will upset people. And, um, and I know that, and I'm sorry about that. However, um, needs must, and I think there's a market out there. Um, I used to upset a lot of people years ago with book breaking because I was one of those people that, that, that serious book people hated because I would go and buy a book like an old, I mean, here's a, you know, and this, this makes money. You can't, you can't argue with this. It makes money. Years ago, they used to make magazines. Over 100 years ago, they'd make magazines and they'd call it a magazine. Um, one that comes to mind is a punch magazine. And um, these magazines came, they're like, they're like a big, thick, hardback book. You know, what, what we call books nowadays. Massive, they were. Absolutely massive. And um, these were magazines. And your satirists and all that of the day would it'd be full of all sorts of information and stuff like that. But it would also be full of pictures. And the pictures that are in these old, old magazines, what they call magazines, any picture that's in a book 100 years old, something like that, is, is going to be like a lithograph. It's going to be like a, what they call a plate, as opposed to just a, just a copy. And I found that if you carefully tore the page out of the book, um, there would be someone out there that would want that. Now, there might be a, satirist, a satirical cartoon about a dentist, for example, and I would think, well, a dentist would, there are dentists out there that would want that on their wall because it's old and it's satirical and it's about them. So I would cut that out and then I would advertise it for sale and I'd sell that page for like 20 quid. You know, the whole book only cost 20, 25 quid, but I would take a page out and sell a page for 20 quid. 15 20 quid so people that are into like saving old books and that would hate me i used to get a lot of hate mail for that too but you know it it it, it, it was a business it made money there are people out there that would have these pages on the wall in a frame and so on anyway i digress so back to the cufflinks so i know that it uh, it upsets people at the fact of destroying them however i had a little think about that and i don't think it is destroying them I think that this pair of cufflinks is a pair of cufflinks that will just go up in value. Because out of the coin collectors out there, if and when, I mean, this is probably, to my knowledge, the only pair of Gruffalo cufflinks, 50p's, in the world at this moment in time today, right? So I go out wearing these, I think to myself, I'm the only person in the world that's got a pair. Talk about designer, you can't get more designer than that. You know, these celebrities pay money for designer wear, but their mates got it as well, who can afford the same price. But at the moment, there ain't nobody doing that. 
So I'm the only person wearing these. Now, when I go out wearing my shirt, I actually feel a bit, I don't know how to explain it, but I don't know. It's like uh, some people have more than one watch. I've just got a crappy watch because I have a problem with my, my something in me makes the watches go funny. So I'm trying a new system out with a plaster on the back of the watch. Anyway, the point is some people will wear several watches. They'll have a watch for when they go out for best. Maybe it'd be a nice gold watch. So when they put that watch on, it's a different sort of feeling. You sort of feel a bit, you know, you're putting something on that's a bit nice. You know, like a lady that puts on a pair of shoes that she only wears for best. So that when she does put them on, she feels a bit, feels a bit nice. I can't explain what that feeling is. I can only re tell you that I sort of experience that feeling a bit when I'm wearing my own cufflinks. Because I know that I'm actually wearing something that is seriously a bit designer. I couldn't afford a designer shirt if my life depended on it. That was a bit of a silly thing to say because it sort of almost has done. But um, this shirt I bought when I was away on holiday and I paid 30 quid for it. It was a £90 shirt. I bought it in a sale. Would never have paid £90 for a shirt. I'd love a £100 shirt, but I would never. I don't think I'd ever pay £100 for a shirt. Anyway, point is, got the shirt on. I go out. Pair of cufflinks feels really nice. I'm going to show you the others because I can't see it out there anywhere else. Who knows? I might get known as the man who invented cufflinks that go up in value. <laughs> hey, so this one, Frankenstein. I don't know how good the phone is, so I won't know until I review this. But there's my Frankenstein one, and I just think you know they look pretty cool. You can't see what's on them as you're, as you're walking around and doing it, which is, you don't necessarily want to. You know, you don't want people going, ooh. But at the same time, they are conversation pieces. People do mention them. They go, oh, what's that? That's not a different cufflink. And they'll have a look. Goes that real? And uh, and I go, yeah, it's real. It's, uh, and, and then we talk about the coin and we talk about, you know, the rarity of the coin and one thing or another. So they're great for a little bit of a conversation piece, but they're great for feeling like I've got something that not many people have. Well, at the moment, nobody has. But if you start buying them, or anybody starts buying them, then they'll have them as long, alongside I'll have them. And of course, the price of the cufflinks will just go up. So at the moment, we might be selling, I don't know, say a pair of Frankenstein cufflinks for, I don't know what they would be. I'm just going to, top of my head, uh, top of my head, 30, might be about 50 quid, right, for a pair of Frankenstein cufflinks. Maybe in five years' time, a pair of Frankenstein cufflinks might be 100, 150 quid. I see them going up in value because how would they ever go down in value? Because there would be, somebody put these up for sale, there would be coin collectors out there be like, oh, I wouldn't mind them. You know, so there's a market out there, I'm sure of it. I wonder what happened if I put a pair up in auction. I'll have to see. Want to see another pair? Uh, that was Frankenstein. Then another one is uh, there's Sherlock Holmes. Looks pretty neat, doesn't it? Looks different. Sort of looks a bit different when it's on a cufflink. Sometimes. Can you see? Nice. Again. And the workmanship is phenomenal. The workmanship on that, I mean, look at the circle. I don't know if you can see it, but look at the circle of where the cufflink back hits the coin. And you're struggling to see, you know, anything coming out of there, not like some of the shoddy workmanship that you see. It's phenomenal workmanship. I've been really, really lucky to find someone that can do this. How long he's going to be able to do it for, I don't know. But... Um, and how much he's going to be able to do, I don't know yet. But I found someone that their workmanship is phenomenal. So good, in fact, that I guarantee these for life, that the backs will never come off the coin. And if they ever do, you send them back to me. And you don't need to do any of that rubbish about keeping receipts. Because if you bought it off us... Sorry about that. Just had a phone call. That was Gary. Gary down in uh, Wales, the fella who had a right result with getting a load of pre-decimals. So a uh, little shout out to Gary and his grandchildren, which is uh, Johnny and Becky and uh, little Richard. 
So hello to them. Okay, so if you uh, if you bought it off us, you don't need to worry about receipts and all that kind of thing because we got it. All we'll do is look at your account. We can see that you bought it. Doesn't matter when you bought it. Guarantee's always good, and uh, and then we'll deal with it. So that's the kind of guarantee that we give with it. Um, and as I say, you can see yourself. I'll show you the back of another one as well. So there's a nice juicy one. Going out with aviation. There's the 2017 aviation that caused a bit of a stir. Apparently only 400 of them went into circulation. Um, I don't class it as a circulated coin myself, even though 400 went into circulation. As far as I'm concerned, it's an uncirculated coin. And there it is again. So, <clears throat> and I quite like, you know, the d d different designs on them. Again, you can't see exactly, which as people can't see exactly what the design is, but, you know, you know what it is. It's great. And they look good. It, you can you get the glint, you get the designs. Not necessarily see the design that's on somebody's shirt, but you can see that it's something. You know, if you see what I mean. They are all different. And, uh, and it feels quite, I don't know, it does feel a bit exclusive. Like I say, I'm sorry for the people that... Uh, that find it a bit abhorrent but look at it this way if you own as somebody else quite rightly said on one of the comments if you own one of these and I've just put it onto a pair of cufflinks you could say that your one just went up by a fraction because that's one pair left less it's one pair less than there is in the marketplace for to go in somebody's coin collection if you're that desperate for one, yes, you could buy it off a pair of cufflinks, but, you know, to take it all apart and everything else, all you're going to do is ruin the coin, so no point. That'll hold its value just as a pair of cufflinks without taking it apart. So I quite like that idea. And again, you know, if you can see the see how close we can get it, and you can see how good that is around the edge. Who knows, we might have even started a new hobby. People then might start collecting cufflinks. You know, I quite like having a selection myself. And I've never been a cufflink man before, but now I'm, I'm sort of, maybe it's probably because I'm doing them, but I'm quite into these. Stephen Hawkins. Everyone different. You could even choose to wear a Stephen Hawkins on one and a Gruffalo on the other if you wanted to. I mean, you can mix and match them how you wanted. That would be quite fun to have invented a, uh, a new collection thing if nobody's doing it already i mean imagine going out to a book club or a film event or some associated some kind of thing and you've got your cufflinks on for jane austen they show up quite well i can actually see this one in the reflection of the camera whereas a couple of the others are a bit on the faint side but i can actually see that can you see that old jane austen yay shows up very well and uh, once again, take it off and show you the back. It's really, really good. So you can start collecting them. And you can know that when you buy one, it's probably not going to go down in value. It will probably never be let, worth less than what you paid for it. Even if you pay 30 quid or 40 quid for a pair of cufflinks, it'll probably never be worth less, depending on the coin, of course. I mean, we can do it with any coin. I just thought of, uh, I didn't want to do the same as everybody else. I've got customers that are manufacturers that buy from me in wholesale on coins that they then turn into cufflinks. And I've never really wanted to go down the road of competing with my customers. The reason that I'm doing it at the moment is because none of my cufflink manufacturer customers want to make cufflinks that are big and ch chunky like this and, and i get it because traditionally cufflinks have been small and so in to attempt to try and t persuade a manufacturer that you need to buy these by the hundred and make cufflinks out of them and it's going to be a really good business for you is like they're not having it so i thought well okay if you won't do it i'd rather sell my customers cufflinks on my website just like if you're a customer of mine and you make something with coins, I would like to sell your product on my website. You know, you buy the product off me and I advertise the end product that you make and so on. So I don't mind doing that. I've got a customer who makes rings out of coins. At the moment, we're just trying to figure out a way to be able to advertise it right, uh, what with pictures and one thing and another. But um, 
you know, if you make something out of coins, I'm interested. And uh, unfortunately, the cufflink manufacturers around the world are not interested in making chunky cufflinks. And I think they're missing a trick. I think people have gone into a chunky, a chunky area now in society. You know, I mean, watches on the market never used to be that chunky. This is only a cheap watch, it's only 15 quid. I don't know what it looks like. It probably looks a cheap watch. I don't know, but it's big and it's chunky. I didn't want it. I didn't want a ch chunky watch. I just, it was the first one I saw, it's 15 quid. I wanted to try out the plaster idea to see if I can keep a watch working. So I just bought it, it was the first one I saw. But my point is, there weren't many flat ones on the table. It's chunky this, chunky that. People want to go out with all the bling. People want to wear a watch that says that they've got two grand on their wrist and all the rest of it, you know? So if you're going to put two grand on your wrist, you don't want to put 50p on your cufflink. Well, how you do want to put 50p, but you don't want to wear a cufflink, pair of cufflinks that are worth two bob, do you? You want to wear a pair of cufflinks that are nice, worth a few quid. You don't want to go out and get a diamond pair of cufflinks. Everybody that's got money's got a diamond pair of cufflinks. Who do you know that's got one of them? Apart from me, of course. You know me. But who else do you know that's got one of them? No one. Because no one in the world has made a Jane Austen £2 pair of cufflinks. Except me. No one's daft enough. But I'm sure there's a business there. What do you buy the person who's got everything? I mean, you've got all the coins. You collect all these coins. You're saving all these coins for your kids and your grandkids. So when it's Mother's Day, Father's Day, Birthday, Christmas, what do they buy you then? Nothing they can buy you, can they? I mean, you're the one, you're the coin person buying it all for them. What do they buy you? Nice pair of them. And you feel good wearing them. So let's show you another one now, Paddington. Paddington at the station, that one. Now, as you know, Paddington, or you should know, Paddington is not a rare coin. We sell that for a couple of quid, two or three quid or something like that, Paddington. It's not a rare coin. It looks nice though, on a pair of cufflinks. And again, there's a good bit of detail in that. You can see that, I can see that quite clearly in the reflection. And let's take it off, yeah, and have a look at the back. You can see the back. Really well made. Next, of course, Paddington at the palace, waving a flag at the palace. Or you could put Paddington waving at the flag at the palace on one hand. I've got both. But you could put the other one on the other. So you could have Paddington at the palace, Paddington at the station, or Paddington at the station, Paddington at the palace, or both the same. And, uh, and chop and change them around. I've taken them both off. I haven't looked at the backs, but I'm that confident that the backs are going to be top. We haven't exactly got a handle on the boxes yet. We bought some boxes and we ended up with these and it says, they're supposed to be cufflink boxes, but it says Monica Vineda MV on them and it's got monicavineda.com on the box. Don't really want that on. And uh, and we've and in the middle, it's got the hole for the cufflinks, but we haven't got any sponge or anything yet. So I've just, I've got a, put one inside a bag, one outside a bag, so they don't knock together, and put it in a cufflink box. So if you buy a pair of cufflinks before we've got that sorted, sorry to say they're gonna come, but I haven't got a better way of doing that at the, at the minute. But I'm sure that'll be sorted within a couple of weeks of the date of this video, really. Anyway, um, I'm also gonna give some of these away. So um, leave a comment on this video to say what you think. What do you think of the idea of chunky cufflinks? Turning 50p's and, and two pounds into cufflinks. The biggest coin that they put in cufflinks is the pound. I know, because I sell them by the hundred to them. They don't put two pound coins on cufflinks, they don't put 50p's on cufflinks. So we're the first person to do that. What do you think of that? I'd like to know. If you're abhorrent with the idea, that's fine. I'm not gonna chastise you just because you don't like my idea. Um, you're entitled to your opinion and if you're if you feel strongly that it's wrong To damage coins then you're entitled to that opinion and nobody should uh, nobody should talk down to you for that Just like if you think that it is okay to to do a coin in and turn it into a pair of cufflinks Then like me then that opinion is an opinion and uh, if other people don't like it Well, they're entitled to their own opinion, you know fair's fair and all the rest of it so uh, just leave a comment to say there's Peter Rabbit. I think that's 
Peter Rabbit Mansion of Carrot 2019. So there's another non-release coin on a pair of cufflinks. Peter Rabbit 2019. It's quite cool going out with him. And it's the only coin not released yet. Someone asked a quite a, an important point, which I'm going to cover again in the video uh, that I do as a main update, etc. But in one of the ones I did for last a competition for comments, um, uh, John mentioned on the video when we pulled the winner, it was number 15 and mentioned the person's name. And then someone else said, number 15, I didn't know we had numbers. Well, you don't, have to, don't worry about that in a sense, because for small giveaways, I literally just assign a number to every single person that leaves a comment. And once I've assigned a number to every single person, say there's 20, 20 numbers, 20 people, I'm just using that as an example, then I'll say, I'll, I'll go, we go on to uh, random.org and put in one to 20 and hit the button and there's the number. It's that quick, it's that easy. We're only videoing it for big prizes, but other than that, for small prizes, I'll just allocate a number and I just draw one and, and that's it. So, um, and on this particular video, because this video is advertising our cufflinks, um, we're going to give a pair of cufflinks away every now and again. Might be a pair a week, might be a pair every couple of weeks, might be a pair every two or three weeks. Uh, I don't know, whatever I feel like doing. Anyway, every now and again, I'm going to pick someone that leaves a comment on this video and I'm going to... Uh, we'll, we'll do. I'll assign numbers when I do the draw to everybody and I'll hit the button and we'll pull a winner and whoever that winner is I will then leave a public comment on this video to say uh, we're sending a free pair of cufflinks to a mention of the person's name. Alright, so every now and again someone on this video is going to get a pair of cufflinks and when I say every now and again I've got like 50 pairs of cufflinks to give away so um, on this particular video I'm going to give a pair of cufflinks away every now and again ongoing for the foreseeable future um, just check if, if it's still going if it's still running just check to see what the date was I left the last comment of giving one away and if it was three months ago then it must have finished but if it was only a week or two ago then it's still running so uh, keep watching this keep coming back to it keep leaving comments on it let me know what you think I'm really interested and uh, every now and again someone's going to get a free pair of cufflinks until the comments stop coming in and uh, in a way to try and boost this video and and get it up you know um now uh the other thing is in order to uh, be in the competition for this one what i'd like you to do is i'd like you to do something for me and that is share this video doesn't matter if you share this video to one person or a million people doesn't matter if you share this video to a facebook group that's got a thousand people in it or whether you share it to a video that's got a Facebook group with no people in it doesn't matter just share the vid share the vid leave a comment and say you've shared the vid and also leave a comment to let me know what you think about the idea I've shown you this one. Oh no Taylor of Gloucester there we go Taylor of Gloucester 50p and if yeah I can sort of see the outline of that it's reasonably defined got it here we got the 10 peas. There's Bond, B for Bond. B for Bond. So it works on the letters as well. There's the 10 P, C for cricket. I don't suppose you want to see them all on my shirt. I don't even know if you can see that really. I can't see it too well. That's cricket. And that's those. So, uh, for the most part, we don't. I'm, I'm, we're not making and making and making them every single day, and uh, putting loads and loads and loads into stock. So, for the most part, I use a, a generic photograph of something like this, and um, and we make them to order. So, uh, I've only got. There are a lot of coins. I've got a lot of uncirculated for, but at the moment, I'm just putting uncirculated coins on them or bunts or from packaged if they're if they're a non-release coin then they come from a from a set or from a package or raw mint package or break open or whatever Stephen Hawkins they've come from the raw mint package sets which is why they're quite expensive um, but there you go so nice designer cufflinks have something a bit special and feel good about it 
So that's a lot. www.thegreatbritishcoinhunt.com and uh, see you next time. Please share. Thank you very much. And subscribe. Thank you very much. Bye for now. Yeah, just to mention, see, I've done it again. Always do it. Bye for now, and then I come back with something else. Um, about subscribing, we do give little freebies away here and there to subscribers, and there are lots of benefits to you being a subscriber, like you get information that we give first before anybody else. So, um, please subscribe and please share. Thank you very much. Bye for now.